Hi guys, so today we are in the forest and we will be collecting leaves. We're gonna bake them, we're gonna get them ready for a terrarium. I may collect a few conkers as we go, but yeah, let's go. Look how much they're ready to drop. And they're just hanging in there on the tree. <laughs> Why won't you drop already? We need you. One. <laughs> So basically I'm trying to collect these but I don't want them to be too dirty or that they have li like little creatures living on them because I think it'd be mean to take them out of the forest. So I'm being very picky about what I actually pick up. Look at all this moss. This forest is basically how I want my tank to look. It's so pretty. So we're thinking these are actually chestnut tree leaves. I don't know if they're definitely safe for tanks. I will look them up before I actually use them but we're collecting them anyway. So we found quite a few oak leaves, but I'm going to check each one because a moment ago we found a really nice big leaf, but also found this in it. Look at that caterpillar, it is making a cocoon in this leaf. I've never seen a caterpillar look like that before. Look, it has a little pink butt, something sticking out its butt's pink. And it's yellow and green, it's so pretty. We got a variety of leaves. We ideally wanted mainly oak leaves, but we did end up with some chestnut ones because there was just tons and tons of them. We also got some conkers. Oh my god, oh my god, oh, I don't think, I don't think. Now, the reason we got conkers is that I have read that spiders hate them, um, but I'm not 100% sure if they're safe to go in the tank, so. I might actually just put them in my room. But first, what we need to do is wash through the leaves with some warm water. So I'm going to put the leaves in this sort of baking tray. Um, I'm going to put them on gas mark one and I'm going to check them every 15 minutes. But what I'll do is I'll leave a link below to what I'm using as instructions. Hopefully they're correct. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're gonna pop this in the oven now. Right, they are done and they are crispy. So they're finally nice and cool. It's been a while and nice and crunchy, it's lush. Also, they smell amazing. Like, forget your Yankee candle. If you want your house to smell lush, go and get some leaves, put them in the oven. It just is amazing. Now, I have been looking up about these chestnut ones. I can't find anything, even people using them. So I'm not really sure. I've seen chestnut oak tree leaves being sold but I think this is a different type I think it's I'll put the name up what I found but anyway um I'm not gonna add them in today because I want to still double check on that and also I have plants to add in to both Drogo and Lyra's tank and so I'll be doing a video on that and that's when I'll add these in but yeah I'm really happy how this turned out this is a really super simple technique I thought it'd be a lot harder but yeah that's how you sanitize leaves Another thing I figured I'd show you in this video is something I got for one pound. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes you can go to like auctions and car boot sales and get stuff cheap and this was certainly cheap. So we have a tank which I may use for feeder insects. It's bigger than my current one. My, my current one was actually bought at a car boot sale years ago. So I, I like a bargain. But what's inside of it, I can't actually get the lid off, it's very dusty. What's inside of it is two pieces of driftwood and I figured, you know, for a pound to get these two, that's quite good going. I saw ones this size in my local reptile shop and they were like five pounds each, so bargain. I'm also going to give this a thorough wash. The... Okay. Um, the tutorial I'm going to use is from Josh's Frog, so I'll link this below if you want to check it out. So from what I've read, this needs to reach at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit for like two hours. And that's apparently gas mark one. So I'm going to try that. I think that's probably the safest way to do it and you have to keep checking on it. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is wash this off with warm water just to make sure there's any like debris and stuff off of it. Also, I don't want to bake a spider. That's, that's mean. <laughs> I will say I'm a little confused because I don't know if you have to put them on a baking tray. It does say you have to, uh, you may have to do it for several hours so it reaches 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, as I said, I'm on gas marks here, I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> I don't know if to put them on a baking tray or just put them like straight in. 
I've gone for a baking tray. This, I, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is a tutorial, to be honest. You're just watching someone try to bake wood. I don't know. Anyway, pop that in and leave that for a few hours. But, as I said, it's important to keep an eye on it. I figured I'd check on this every 15 minutes just to ensure that it's not on fire. Um, it has dried out a lot, but I'm gonna keep this in for a lot longer. So I don't know how well you can see this, but it is actually kind of dried, very cloudy. That could be down to me sort of using the scratchy sponge thing on the side or fairy liquid or the uh, disinfectant. But what I'm gonna use is a white vinegar because I've heard that helps to remove it. So let's hope so. I don't know how well you can see it though. Maybe you can see it a bit better there. You see that? It's very, very cloudy. <laughs> So here they are, as you can see, they're a little bit white on the outside, but I believe they are thoroughly baked. They're very hot at the moment, so I'm gonna leave them. Um, but when the time comes and I use them in a tank, they should be properly ready to go. And the other option with boiling water is that, when I was reading about it, it said they has to be boiling for like six hours at like a consistently boiling temperature. I, I don't I couldn't do that so <laughs> this was a better option obviously if you have bigger pieces of driftwood that's something you may have to do but obviously you can do your own research and see if what's best for you but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video it's been a bit weird I've you know it's not really a tutorial because I'm sort of doing this for the first time as well usually when I get driftwood I'll get it from a shop and so it's already been sorted out but since this came from a previous owner I don't know exactly what's been on it. I thought it's just safe to disinfect it. And obviously with the leaves as well, that's from the forest, so we need to be extra safe. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye. <laughs>